Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be here this morning. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to get started this morning. I just want to start out by saying I'm so grateful to God for all of you being here this morning. And my prayer is that the Spirit of God will move in this place mightily and that each of us will be touched by the Word of God, by the praise and worship that will go forth, and that each of us will be able to receive the things that God has for us today. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, this is a day that the Lord has made. I will, I will, I will, I will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Amen. Let us pray this morning. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come right now in the precious name of Jesus, and we thank you for all that you are doing. Father, we pray for so much that has taken place in our world around us. We remember those in Ukraine and throughout the world, Father, where there's wars and things going on and where starvation and famine is, is, is spread. We just pray, oh God, that you continue to move among your people and that we become lights in this dark world, that we will shine as light, that we will walk among those, oh God, that they might see you and that they might want to serve you and give their life to you. Father, I pray this morning as we gather in this place that we will surrender our hearts to you in letting you have your way among us and I pray that as the praise singers begin to sing and we begin to worship you that you will fill this place with your presence and that you will stir each and every heart that our desire is to look to you for truly you are our help you are our strength we thank you this morning God we praise you this morning we praise you this morning heal those who are sick among us those who are shut in oh God Bless them, O oh God. Give them courage. Give them strength. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, let's stand and worship this morning. Shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns on. 
this, Lord. We give you the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Because you paid the price for us. You paid the ultimate price for us with that sacrifice of love. See 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hand and just give him a wave offering this morning. Father, we just thank you right now. Jesus, we thank you that you paid it all this morning. We thank you that all is paid, that there's nothing due. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercy. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that washed away all our sins. We give you praise this morning in Jesus' name. Let all the saints say amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated just for a moment. Amen. Want to read a scripture to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 2, I'm going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 2. Therefore, remember that you once were Gentile in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, but what, what, by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh, that at the time you were without Christ, being alien from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now, I like that. But now, say but now. In Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Amen. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Look at your neighbor and say, we got access. Oh, yeah, we got access. I love that. Amen. By his blood, not anything we done, but by his blood, we have access to the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. In remembrance of that, we want to partake of the communion this morning. Amen. Yeah, I just get excited. I like that. We got access. Amen. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm glad I got access. Hallelujah. I can call upon him and I know he will answer. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered, that the Lord Jesus on the same night which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. So let's break the, let's, let's take the bread together. You just pull up that little Now, what's so wonderful about the bread is that you'll notice this bread don't have no yeast in it. It hasn't risen. You know, it's, 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 it's a bread that is, we look at it as being without yeast. Yeast kind of demonstrates the fact that there's sin. He was the sinless lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. His body, he bore our sins on the cross. That by his stripes, the Bible says, we were let us all partake together in remembrance of the body of Christ. Thank you, Father, that Jesus came. And thank you, Jesus, that you gave your body that we might have healing in ours. That healing has come to us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. He also took up the cup and said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Let me say to you, as we get ready to partake of this wood of iron, which represents the blood of Jesus, uh, there's only one cleansing agent for sin. Nothing, nothing else works. Nothing else works. Nothing cleanses sin but the blood of Jesus. I don't care what you do, how many good works you do, nothing will cleanse your sins but the blood of Jesus. And so this morning, we want to thank Jesus for his precious blood that have washed away all our sins. Let's all partake together, amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your precious blood. We just praise you this morning that our sins are cleansed because of your blood and we give you praise for it in your precious name amen and amen well praise the lord god bless you
have been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. Yes, it does. Cause I'm no longer.
I don't, I don't know about you guys this morning, but I don't, I don't feel like we're quite done here in this moment. As we were singing the bridge of this song, it, such powerful words, the, the mountains shake before you, the, the demons run and flee. There is no power in hell or any who could stand against the power, the presence of the great I am. And this morning, I just feel like there's needs in this room. I just feel like there is 
physical needs, there's emotional needs, there's spiritual needs in this place. And I feel like God's saying the answers that you're looking for, the healing that you're looking for, the relief that you're looking for is found in my presence. That anything that you're carrying, anything that you're going up against, anything that you're facing this morning, there's power in his presence this morning. And so if I could, just for these next few moments, if I could have my leaders come to the front, if you would. And if you're in this place and, and you find yourself in that category, you need some healing this morning. You need a touch from the Lord this morning. You've been carrying something for far too long and you just need to come to the altar and say, Lord, I give this to you this morning. There's power in his presence, right? The, the word tells us in, that there's freedom in his presence. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So this morning, if that's you, if you need healing, if you need a touch, if you need the, the spirit of the living God to fill you up and encourage you and to remind you that he is with you, for these next few moments as we go back into the bridge, would you just come? Would you come? As we sing, as we sing that the mountains shake before him, would you come? Would you believe that the problem, that the issue, that the pain that you're carrying will shake before the name of Jesus this morning. For these next few minutes, would you come? that out this morning. At the mention of the name King of Majesty, there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am, the great I am, the great I am. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
And can we just lift up just a victorious shout of praise this morning for the Lord, for his presence, for his goodness in our life, for his faithfulness that comes again and again and again. Father, we thank you, God. We are grateful this morning, Lord, for who you are. We thank, we're thankful for your hand, Lord, that heals, Father. We thank you for your presence, Lord, that brings peace and joy, God. Father, thank you for meeting us in this place this morning, God. I just pray that the rest of this service, Father, Father, that you would be honored and glorified throughout it, God. Father, that we would just sit in this place, Father, that we would sit in your presence, Lord, that we would hear what you have to say to us this morning. Father, we're, we're grateful for you. We're grateful for who you are. And, we just thank you this morning. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you, God. It's in your mighty and your holy name that we pray. And we still have some ministry going on. And so if you would, if you can we just sit here for a few moments? If you're in your chair this morning, could you just thank the Lord for his, for his faithfulness, for his goodness in your life? Father, we worship you in this place, Lord. We give you thanks for what you're already doing, God. We give you thanks for your goodness and your mercy, God, in this place. Father, we give you the rest of this morning, God. Just do, just do what you want to do in this place, Lord. Father, we worship you, God, and we praise you. We thank you, Father God. In your mighty and holy name we pray. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We worship you, God. Thank you, God. Can we just give the Lord a, just a hand clap this morning to thank him for his goodness?
Thank you, Father God. I'm so excited for this morning. The Lord's already showed up, and it's just worship this morning. So I don't want to say just worship, because that sounds bad. But anyway, um, man, if you guys, we're, we're so grateful for you guys this morning. I'm so grateful that you're in this house. Um, if you would, just for the next few moments, would you pop on back up to your feet? And can we just greet each other this morning? Can we just, just go around? Somebody you haven't seen in a while, could you just give them a hug? Or if you've seen them last week, that's fine too. Just give them a big hug. Amen, amen, amen. Whoa. Hallelujah. So grateful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, she's with her sister. She's, uh, her, her sister's husband passed away. Yeah, so she's with her in Dallas. Yeah. All right, all right. Full transparency. Um, I haven't used anointing oil in a while, and so I put way too much on my hands. So this microphone is really oily. So I apologize for whoever has to use that mic next. Um, this morning, we're going to jump into some announcements. Um, firstly, if you're a visitor in this place, welcome. We're so, we're so thankful that you're here this morning. Um, welcome. And if you haven't gotten a visitor packet, please, um, if you would, just kind of wave to one of our ushers. We have our ushering team over here. And uh, they would love to get you an usher, or an usher pack, a welcome pack, um, so that we can get you a little gift and stuff as well. So please be sure to do that. Um, next, we have change for missions. This is where we collect our change, our coins, our nickels, dimes, pennies, anything you can think of. Um, and we uh, put them in that box right there with flowers. It's beautiful. Um, I know. I know, right? And um, that every, once we gather that, once that box gets filled up, we send that to our missions focuses in Belize and in Turkey. And uh, because of your giving, we were able to buy um, our, our missions focus in Belize a van. And so um, it's a church that, that we uh, uh, serve that Pastor Lee, our lead pastor in Katy, um, helped found. And so um, we, your giving makes a difference. And so if you have quarters, nickels, dimes, whatever, just bring them from home. Stick them in that box, and uh, they will go to a great cause. And so um, next we have um, share our service, our sermon on, on YouTube, on Facebook. Um, just be sure to find us there and uh, just give us a like or a follow or subscribe. I feel like I'm a social media influencer. Just like my channel, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. And so um, if you are not already, join our grow team. Uh, raise your hand if you're in the grow team or let me hear you whoop whoop. Anybody? Yeah, we have a few. Um, if, if you are not part of our grow team, highly encourage you to join. Um, it is just such a blessed time on Wednesday nights. Uh, Pastor Clinton and Brother Mac um, just do a great job of leading that. And so if you're interested in signing up, come find me after service, or you can scan this QR code um, and get yourself signed up for that. Um, next, we are starting an evangelism small group. Um, this is going to be focused on outreach and discipleship. Um, and so if you are interested in joining that, um, if you'd like more information on it, just get with me after service, and I'd love to give you some more info on that. Um, everybody say Easter. Easter. Easter is April 17th um, here at Go. Uh, it will be the same time as always, 10 a.m. So we're expecting a good amount of visitors. And so um, if you know somebody who needs to be in church Make sure you bring them on Easter. It's going to be a great time. Uh, just a reminder to bring your flowers. So for those who haven't been before, we have a big cross that um, we have chicken wire on, and it looks like kind of ugly initially. Uh, but once everybody puts their flowers in there at the end of service, it just looks super beautiful, and it's just amazing. And so please be sure to bring flowers on Easter. Bring flowers and a friend. It's going to be a great time on Easter. Um, next, we have a lock-in for our youth. Uh, that's going to be Friday, April 29th, and this is going to be at Arcady campus. Um, Y'all be praying for those youth pastors because 
staying up all night with a bunch of kids. Man, I'm glad I'm over here now. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's Friday, April 29th. It'll begin at 6.30 p.m., um, and it'll end the next morning at 7 a.m. And so if you're interested in signing up your youth for that, please let me know, um, and I can get you the information for that. Um, and then we have a women's painting event, April 30th at 10 a.m. Um, the cost is $10, and so we're going to have somebody come in uh, where you're all going to get your own art supplies. You're going to get to paint, follow along with somebody who's leading the class, and so we'll have breakfast as well. And so it'll be just a great time for the ladies. Um, let me hear the ladies this morning. Uh, okay, okay. That was a little weak, I'm not going to lie, but, you know, whatever. You know, it's, it's cool. Um, but if you're interested in signing up for the women's event, again, scan that QR code, and that'll take you to um, the sign-up for that event as well. And so, uh, finally, we have four ways to give here at Go Church. You can give in person at one of our services. You can give online. You can give through text and by mail, and that information is up here if you need that. Um, but this morning, I have asked um, our brother Rob to come up and share about tithes and offerings. Could you just give it, give it up for Rob as he comes up? And I get the oily mic. Sorry. It's good, bro. It's good, bro. Uh, so I was born and raised in church, so tithing has always just been a part of my life. Ever since my first job at 15, I've always given the first 10% at least to my local church. Uh, sometimes it's a little more difficult than others. You know what I'm saying? I, we have, we've all been there. We've struggled. And we've heard the stories, right, of unexpected checks in the mail. And over the years, we've had a few of those. But uh, I really wanted to talk about one time when Cassie and I were first married. And we were living in a little apartment. Our budget for a meal was $2 per person per meal. So there wasn't a whole lot to go around. Uh, and when I was cooking some chicken strips for dinner. We're in our little apartment, just first married. I'm like, Lord, there was only three chicken strips in this whole bag. And I'm like, this ain't going to go far between me and my wife, Lord. I'm like, I don't, I'm supposed to provide for my wife. I don't know what's, like, how, how is this going to feed both of us? I was like, okay, I'm, this is what we got. It's what we got. Battered them up, floured them, did the season, all the stuff. Put three chicken strips in the fryer. When they were done, I pulled out four chicken strips and a handful of nuggets. It, I didn't have five basketfuls of loaves and fishes left, but by golly, God proved himself faithful early on in our marriage, yeah. and he has always been faithful. He always will be faithful. We cannot outgive God. If we seek him first and his righteousness and all these things, will be added to us as well. Amen. 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 Would you Amen. Pray? Okay. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are a faithful God. I thank you that you always provide our needs, Lord God. As, as Solomon said, I once was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread, Lord. We thank you that you will meet the needs of every person here this morning, Lord. I pray that, that you would put on their hearts to give not out of what's left, Lord God, but from the first fruits, Lord God, and that you would multiply that, Lord, that you give bread to the hungry and, and, and bread to the sower, Lord God, that we can sow seed into your kingdom, Father, and reap a mighty harvest. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Brother Rob. Appreciate it. Yeah, just put it back there. Awesome, awesome. All right. If you uh, are taking notes this morning, the title of today's message is Testimony Time. Everybody say Testimony Time. <laughs> so this morning is going to be a bit of a unique service. Um, it's not going to be just our typical Sunday morning. Um, I'll share for about 10 minutes. Um, then I'm gonna have three we're going to have three testimonies up here to hear. Um, when, somebody, when I said 10 minutes, I saw somebody celebrating. I'm not going to point them out. Um, <laughs> it's fine. We'll uh, pray for you after service. I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, we're going to have three testimonies to hear just about the goodness of God, the goodness of, of, of God's faithfulness in, in our lives. Um, and, and this morning, I just want to talk a little bit about why testimonies are important. Why, why, do, why are we called to share our testimony? Um, there's two different definitions of a testimony. Number one, a testimony is a statement that is spoken in court. The second definition is a public sharing of an experience, right? So for the sake of this morning, we're going to be focusing on that second definition. It's a public sharing of an experience, right? A public sharing for us is an experience of a public sharing of what God has done for us in our lives. 
how we've seen him move in our lives. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their what? Testimony. Testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. This verse here is, is speaking of overcoming the enemy by clinging on to our salvation that is only found in Jesus. Salvation is not found in our works. It's not found in our striving. It's not found in our pursuit of being good enough. Good enough. Our salvation is found only in the good and perfect gift that Jesus Christ gave us when he died for us on the cross. So it, it talks about our salvation is, is how we defeat the enemy, but also by the word of our testimony. Our testimony stirs our faith and, and, and reminds us and allows us the opportunity to remind others or share with others who God is in our lives and what he's done for us, right? The NIV ends this particular verse by saying they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death powerful. That's powerful. It's interesting in, in this verse in Revelation 12, 11, for the word for testimony in the Greek is martyrion. If you're a Greek expert, I apologize. I probably butchered that word just now. But it's where we get the word martyr from. The testimony roughly translates to martyr. They, they love Jesus so much that they would testify of his goodness testify of, of his salvation, even if it meant death for them. So many across the world have paid the ultimate price for their, their faith. We hear stories all the time of, of missionaries or people living in foreign countries who are put to death because they refuse to renounce Christ in their life. It's important that we share our stories, not just in contexts like this, not just to other believers over lunch, but it's important for us to share our stories, our testimonies, the things that God has done in our lives with our communities, with the people around us, with, with the people that we encounter on an everyday basis where we're running errands. It's important for people to know what God has done in your life. This morning, I'm going to give us real quickly six reasons why we testify. Six reasons why we testify. Number one, your story is unique. Everybody say, my story is unique. Everybody in this place has a story that's different from the person that's sitting next to you. Perhaps your story, in your story, maybe you struggled with drugs. Maybe there's people in this place who have, have, have dealt with divorce. There's people in this place who have gone through betrayal. Maybe there's somebody who has, has experienced an abortion and has dealt with the pain that that causes. Maybe you've, you've dealt with loss or you've gone through depression. Everybody in this place has gone through something different. And your story of how Jesus brought healing to your life, or maybe you're still in the process of receiving that healing, but that story of how Jesus is healing you constantly is unique to you. And it's powerful to others that are going through something similar, right? Because although all our stories are different, we find different ways to relate throughout experiences in our stories. So that experience and that pain and that thing that you're going through now might be the same thing that somebody else is going through outside of this place. Yeah. Our stories and our testimonies can relate to you, can relate to others, and, and they can receive from you as well. Number two, we share our testimonies because the Word instructs us to. Plainly put, Jesus told us to do it, right? 1 Peter 3.15 says, Quietly trust yourself to Christ your Lord, and if anybody asks why you believe as you do, be ready to tell him. And do it in a gentle and respectful way. Right now, this verse specifically at, is talking about people asking about our salvation, right? So this morning, that's not a cop-out for you to just, oh, I don't have to share my testimony unless somebody asks me. No, 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 that's not the case, right? In Mark 5, 19, Jesus just healed a, a man who was demon-possessed. And, and, and the man wants to travel with Jesus and follow Jesus everywhere that he goes. But Jesus says, no, go home to your family. And tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. The Lord instructs us to go and share what he's done in our lives. There's, it's such a, a powerful thing. Somebody within our church body, um, actually, uh, I'm not going to point out who it is because I don't want to put any pressure on them. Um, I think worship is still going on this morning. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's somebody within our church body um, who, who I'm, again, I'm not going to point out who they are, but they uh, attend car shows. And they, um, what was that funny? <laughs> they attend car shows and, and they've been part of uh, attending car shows for a while. And, and last Sunday they approached me and they said, hey, um, I've just, I've been really like feeling it on my heart to share my story and to, to share what God's been doing in my life. So would it be okay if I put the Go Church logo on my vehicle? And I was like, absolutely, yes. Like, let me send that over to you like right now. Um, but the heart was that way I can stir a conversation. When I go to these car shows, when they see this logo of a church on my vehicle, they would say, well, that's different. What is going on in your life? What's happening in your life? And that would open a door for this person to be able to share what God has been doing in their life. I'm excited to see it. No pressure. If that's you in this place, no pressure. I'm, it's okay. But I'm so excited um, that we are a body who is excited to share what Jesus is doing, what Jesus has done in our lives. We testify, number three, because people relate to stories over theology. Don't hear me say this morning that theology is not important, because it is. Right? We should know what we believe and why we believe it, and we should have a solid foundation Right, understanding the doctrines of our faith is extremely important. But people relate, re- relate and connect to your story. People relate and connect to your humanity. People relate and connect to your sickness, to your pain, to your victories, your triumphs, your failures. It doesn't, when we share our story, it doesn't feel like we're shoving the Bible down somebody's throat. It just feels like we're, we're celebrating the victories that God has given us in our lives. The things that we've seen him do, we, we, we connect right through our stories. All of us go through struggles. All of us go through trials through, throughout this journey. But we, our stories are different because we overcome by the blood of Jesus, right? We share and we testify, number four, because people can't argue with experience. People can't argue with experience. It's been said that you can argue with somebody who has an argument, but you can't argue with somebody who has had an experience. If somebody were to walk into this place and and not believe in God at all and try to convince me that God does not exist, good luck. You could not because I've experienced him for myself. I've seen him move in my life. There's been times where I thought, Things were impossible and God made them possible. I've seen him remove things from my life. I've seen healings happen. If somebody is missing a leg and then all of a sudden they have a leg, you can't deny what just happened, right? You've, that's an experience. You can't argue with what God has done on the inside of somebody's life. We share our testimony because we become a resource of hope for other people. Has anybody seen those those? Memes, it's kind of a prank, I guess, on Facebook where it's like, oh my gosh, I just found the cheapest gas in all of Houston. It's like $1.75. It's at, and then right when it's about to tell you the address, it says like, see more. And you're like clicking on it for like 10 minutes trying to, and it's not actually taking you anywhere. It's just somebody just typed out see more. And you're just there trying to press it. I'm throwing my phone because I'm so mad because I want cheap gas. Better believe if I found cheap gas, if I found gas for $1.75 a gallon, I would be calling each and every one of you guys up. Hey, it's right over here. You better come and get it. It's not going to last very long. Bring your, all your containers of gas. Bring your ice chest. Fill it up. Get you all the gas that you can get. We are, our stories are resources to other people, to people who, who need hope. My wife works at a pregnancy help center um, throughout the week, and she told me a story of a couple who came in about a month and a half ago, and um, they, were, they were set on having an abortion. And so the, 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 the pregnancy help center she works at, they don't do abortions. They do, um, like, uh, pregnancy tests. They do ultrasounds. They, they give resources and supplies to, to, to new moms and dads who need it. And so this, this couple had come in. They just wanted to get a pregnancy test. They wanted to get an ultrasound so that they could leave, go somewhere, and, and get an abortion. And so um, throughout the course of their appointment, you could just kind of see the wrestling. And they came back for another appointment. So their next appointment, there was another couple who showed up late. Who had a, They just had an appointment to go get, like, their stuff. They, I think it was, like, some baby supplies, some 
baby supplies, what? Some like bottles and, and I believe like a car seat or something like that. And so they were, as this couple who wanted to get an abortion was walking in, this other couple was walking out with their arms just full of supplies. And the guy who's, who wanted to get an abortion, he, he looked at them and he was like, what is, what's, what's that? Like, what do you, why do you guys have all that? Is, where'd you get that? And they're like, oh, this, they, they, they give this to us for free. Like, they, they helped us out. They, they, they walked with us through all these different things. And th- that, that couple who was carrying all these supplies began to share with this couple who wanted to get an abortion how this, help, this pregnancy help center had come and rallied around them, had given them resources and supplies and had been there for them, all completely free of cost. And so you could just kind of see the seed planted there. And that couple came back another week. And again, they kind of had a divine encounter with another couple who was walking out with, again, arms full of supplies. And they were like, oh, my gosh, this is for real. My wife said a couple weeks ago they came back in for their appointment. And they now want to keep the baby. Because they now have hope. Because somebody shared their story about how they didn't have anything before, but now they do. The fear was gone in this couple because all of a sudden they realized I'm not alone. I don't have to do this thing by myself. When we share our stories, they bring hope. We can be a resource for somebody's life. We can bring hope where there is none. We can remind people and tell them that if Jesus did it for me, he can 100% do it for you as well. It stirs our faith and reminds us of the goodness of God, who he is. Finally, this morning, the, 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 the sixth and final reason why we, we, we share our testimonies is that our testimonies glorify God. They glorify God. They, they, they show off his power. They show off who he is. They show off what he's able to do in our lives. Testimonies, whether we realize it or not, are acts of worship. By us sharing, sharing our testimony, we're glorifying God and we're worshiping him for the things that he's done in our lives. We glorify him by sharing the stories of his goodness. And so this, so this morning, rather than you sitting here listening, talking, listen to me talk for about testimonies for about 30 minutes, um, we're going to do things differently. Right? We have three testimonies, all very different, all very unique of God's goodness in somebody's life. And so I've asked three different people to come up and share their testimony. Um, and so if you guys would, um, Brother Leroy, can we get a couple of chairs up here as well? Um, could you guys give it up for Carissa as she comes up to share her testimony this morning? We'll just have a seat right here. Um, just a little bit of background about Carissa. Carissa and her family started coming to church here in February, um, and they have just been faithful ever since. Have you guys even, like, missed the Sunday since then? Um, I don't think so. They've just, yeah, they've gotten plugged, like, all the way in. Um, Carissa and her family, a couple of them are actually going through our membership class through Go 101. Um, and so we're just super excited for the growth that we're seeing in this family, the growth, and, and, and the things that God is doing in their life. And so um, this morning, I just want to we'll sit down with you here, Carissa. Um, firstly, would you tell us your story of your walk with the Lord and how you ended up at Go Church? Um, I just want to start by saying thank you to the Lord for showing up in this place today. And thank you for always showing up in my life, for me personally. Um, he has shown up. He has been there um, since I was little. I, I always knew the Lord was there, and I, was, I loved him. I knew that I loved him. I knew that he was there. Um, from a young age, um, I went with my childhood and upbringing. Um, there was some rough things that went on, but there was always he. I did go to church for a couple years, um, so I knew that background was there. Um, so I'm thankful that he gave me that background to set me up for everything that was going to happen um, going forward. Um, so we, um, I had, it was a little bit rough growing up. I had, um, I did, at the age of 16, I did have an abortion. Um, at the time, I didn't realize how much it would affect me in my older age, um, I um, was with the wrong crowds. Um, I did struggle with addictions. Um, I 
uh, was lost. I was really lost for a long time. Um, but I saw where God constantly showed up and gave me what I needed. So um, I, in the past year and a half, the last year and a half is where he really um, brought me closer. And after um, breaking my ankle and being, um, you know, I couldn't get out of bed for weeks. I've had three surgeries. Um, he used that time for really bringing me close into him and showing me my gifts that he's given me um, and just building our relationship stronger than it's ever been before. And um, I am actually, in that time, um, I learned a lot about what he's calling me to do. Um, my testimony is something that is, can't be summed up just in 10 minutes. I, it's something I've been working on a process of getting it out in a book form um, so that it can help girls um, who've been through certain situations that I have. Um, there's some things that were in writing the book. Um, it's in the works. I got the first draft out, but I'm getting feedback on it so we can go forward from there, add a few more things in. Um, but I know that um, a mentor that I have uh, shared with me that she feels that it'll be best used in possibly women's prisons, women's shelters, um, and I feel really good about that, and, and I think that's where we're going to go with it. Um, so, and then as far as Go Church, I'm so thankful that I was, my mother found Go Church on the internet, and we had attended a Victory. I was looking for something more spirit-filled that was, I wasn't getting anything out of the church we were going to before, and um, so she found Go Church, and I'm so thankful that she did, because it's it's helped me tremendously in my journey. Yeah, man, we're super honored that you guys are here. Um, funny, when I first spoke to Britt on the phone about them attending, she was like, and what's your name? I was like, oh, my name's Edgar. She was like, oh, that'll be easy to remember because we have an Edgar as well. <laughs> so Carissa's husband my is husband also is named Edgar. Edgar. Um, and so um, uh, I also wanted to ask, um, what, has, what do you feel like, I guess, God has been showing you lately, just, you know, all of your story, all the things that you went through, you saw his hand moving in your life. What do you yeah. feel like he's been showing you recently? I think the main thing he has been showing me recently is how much he loves me. Um, he's been showing me that. He's been showing me how, you know, the love that, that love inside of me that I've always had for others. And because it, it was so hard for me, um, going back, I just to briefly explain it, I found my biological dad at uh, just about 32 years old, I'm 36. Um, so finding, uh, finding my biological dad, being raised by somebody that wasn't my biological father and not knowing that my whole life, he didn't even know that. Um, just, I think that's what made it a little bit harder with the father situation for me and my father in heaven. Um, building that relationship with him because I didn't have that father background. And so him showing me how much he loves me is, is helping me to show, to be able to show others how much I love them and how much I want to help them. And um, so just showing me that and then also showing me that he has a, a purpose and a, a, a pretty big calling on my life to helping others and showing others the love that I have inside um, and then number three, is there a theme verse that you have for your life? My theme verse would be, you seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen. Because when you really um, push in and seek him, you will find him. He will meet you there. And it's he's shown that to me so many times. And we're so excited for what God's doing in the life of this family. And I just want to commend yes. you guys as well. Um, you see Carissa and you see Edgar, and then you also see, they always have at least two kids with them, whether it's, <laughs> it's Aiden and, and, uh, Dominique. and Dominique, or they sometimes bring like, little Jojo as well. Mm -hmm. um, but 
you guys are making a lasting impact, an eternal impact on your kids as well by bringing them to church. And so that's just super crucial and super important. And so we're just so proud of you guys for, for that and, and super excited for what God's doing in your life as well. And so, um, yeah, thank you so much thank for sharing you. this morning. Thank you, you guys so much. Thank you. The uh, next person I want to ask to come up, um, if you guys would give it up for Sister Laversi as she comes up this morning. As they make their way up, um, Sister Laversi and Brother Leroy are for, former ministers from San Francisco. Um, they teach our Go 101 class, our membership class, and um, they also head up our usher team as well. Um, they've been faithful to this body for how many years have you guys been here now? Five years? Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so um, Sister Laversi had a, um, for those of you who don't know, um, she experienced a stroke um, a few years ago. How many years was that ago? 2019. 2019. Um, and she just has an incredible testimony about how the Lord just worked in her life um, throughout that time. And so um, Sister Laversi, if you would, just for the next few moments, would you share with us your experience kind of around the time of your stroke and the things leading up to and after that. So, Well, my husband and I, it was um, February 3rd that the stroke happened. And that Saturday, my husband and I had driven over to Louisiana to be with his mom. And that Sunday morning, we got up and he was making breakfast for his mom. And I was getting ready for church. And I came out of the bathroom into the bedroom where we had slept. And I felt the numbness in my left side. And by the time I got to the bed, my whole left side was out. And I fell on the bed. And I called out to my husband. And I shared with him, I said, honey, I've had a stroke. And I need you to call my sister because they lived in the rural. And in the rural, I don't know how many of you know about living in the rural. The hospitals and the doctors are not that great. So I knew... My sister had lived in the area, and she had always told us about the doctors and the hospitals in the area, but she knew where we should go. And I told him, I said, honey, call my sister and find out what ambulance service we should use and what hospital that we need to have them take me to. And, and if any of you know anything about a stroke, you gotta get service right away, otherwise you don't recover. And so he was in denial. He couldn't believe I'd had a stroke. I said, you got to get on this, you know, because I want to recover. And he called my sister. She gave him the information. He called the ambulance service. And within eight minutes, there were eight EMTs at the house. And the first thing they did when they came in was to pray with us. Wow. And so my blood pressure was 200 over 110. And they prayed, but before they got there, my husband's sister-in-law had come over and she had begun to anoint me with oil and pray over me. And my hand was uh, locking up and so she just kept working my hand. And then I inserted my hand, both hands together, and I kept my left hand working. And the doctor said, that is what saved my hand. And uh, we were in the hospital a few days and my husband had gone to the men's room, and this man came in and asked him, well, what are you doing here? And he said, my wife had a stroke. And so he prayed with my husband. And a few days later, my, uh, the pastor came in, and he uh, said that he had come to pray with us. And we asked him, how did you hear about us? And he said, uh, you must know somebody because somebody from my church told me to come and pray with you guys. And he prayed with us. And in a couple of days, we were sent back over to Humble to Encompass. And um, when the doctor came in and he was examining me and everything, it was, it was a hard place to be because the one thing that I had never wanted, I never wanted to have a stroke because I had seen the people who had had strokes and one, uh, uh, some had their hands, they could not straighten out. 
They had a foot that was turned over. Their face was all disfigured. They would try to say their words, and they couldn't get the words for them. And I, my prayer had always been, Lord, I don't ever want to have a stroke. And the first thing that came to my mind was, like Job, the very thing I feared has come upon me. And so as we were in the hospital, all my nurses and my doctors and all of the people who serviced me were uh, Christians. And so that was a blessing to just have them as Christian. And God, the one thing that I was so blessed with is how God began to use me to minister to the people in the hospital. I would pray for their children. I would pray for them. And as the word got around, obviously, that, you know, I prayed for people, then people would come to my room just to be prayed for. And uh, the one that stuck out so much was the, a young man. His, he had left the church, and the, his father was a pastor, and he was the leader of the choir. And he played the, uh, I, I guess it probably was the piano in the church because it was Church of God in Christ Church and the pianos and uh, organs, you know. And so he was saying how he left the church because of the way the church treated him. And my heart just broke because a lot of us have experienced a pain in the church. And I, my thing when he told me that, because God began to show me that he dealt with the spirit of homosexuality, and that's why they had ostracized and treated him so bad. And I just asked him, I say, would you, on behalf of the church, forgive me for the way we have treated you? And he just broke and he began to cry, you know. And I hugged him and he just boo-hooed. And I, I was just so touched and I was crying also. And God just moved with him so powerfully that before I left the hospital, he came to me and he said, I'm going back to the church and I'm going to talk to my dad. Wow. And so that was just a real blessing. Wow. And before I got out of the hospital, uh, that Monday before I was getting out that Wednesday, I came down with gout. And I had suffered gout ever since I had um, had cancer and uh, they took one of my kidneys. And so I Gout, I don't know how many of you know about it, but gout is worse than having a baby without anesthesia. And so I, I was crying. I couldn't go to therapy for two days, and I was just crying, and the doctor didn't give me any pain meds, and I don't know why that was. But then Tuesday, he came in, and he gave me, around 4 o'clock, he gave me a shot of prednisone. And it was around 3 or 4 o'clock, um, that Wednesday morning, God woke me up, and he told me to take your hands and put your left leg over your right leg. Well, I couldn't move my, my left leg. It had moved in over almost two months. And so I just, uh, I did what God told me to do. And when I got my leg across my, over my right knee, I was able to just swing my leg you know, and I just couldn't believe, you know, all of this time I wasn't able to move my leg. And so my husband, one of the things that happened is that the hospital gave my husband a bed in the room. They had given us a private room, and he was able to sleep every night in the room with me. And, and so I woke him up. I said, honey, look, look, look. And he, he woke up. He sat up. He looked, and I was swinging my leg. And so we both began to praise the Lord and just weep, you know, because the doctor had told me that um, it would probably be one to two years before I could, you know, even walk, you know. And um, one thing also is that Pastor Clinton and Sister Deborah came to the hospital after I was there, probably about a week after I was there. And I was toe up, you guys. My hair all over my head. <laughs> no makeup, you know, can't move anything. <laughs> In the hospital gown. And I was really toe up. And Pastor Clinton told me, he said, Sister Laversi, 
you're going to walk in the church just like you used to. You know, God is going to heal you. And I was blessed by the word, you know, but it was a long time coming as far as the doctor was saying. <laughs> but one thing I did before I got out of the hospital, I asked the doctor three questions. I say, where was I when I came here? What was your prognosis for me? And as opposed to where I am now, where did you expect me to be? And he said, when you came here, you were at zero. My prognosis for you was zero. And where you are now, we didn't expect you to be there three to six months. And if you walk, we don't expect you to walk for one to two years. Well, I beat the odds with God. Within three months after I was out of the hospital, I was walking on the walker. I had um, nurses, therapists, physical therapists, and whatever other kind of therapist that is, and home health care aid coming every day to work with me. And I was so blessed by that because it relieved my husband so much of the pressure. And I was walking on the walker, and then God had sent me my first home health aid had cancer. And I was able to pray for her during that time and was even able to contribute finances because she, I don't think home health care aides make very much money. And so I was able to contribute to her, and she didn't want to take it, but I'd say, look, you take this because I believe, you know, God has put in my heart to give this to you and take it and help with your treatments and everything. And God was just so good. I tell you, the uh, way he moved through me in the hospital, I'm still amazed. And as you see, you know, I, I share with Pastor Edgar, I say there are times when I get embarrassed to walk in always holding on to my husband. But um, in God's, in my weakness, God is made strong, you know. And I, I thank God for my husband who has been through so much. It's like every time, ever since I committed my heart to the Lord without compromise, it's like I have a bullseye on my back and the enemy keeps shooting at me. But I thank God for the prayers of the saints. And one thing that God always, he promised me, he said, I will send you help from the sanctuary. And I had uh, two friends who came down not at the same time, but they came, and I called them my sanctuary friends because they came when I needed them each time that I have had an attack of the illnesses that has come up on my life. They have been there, and I thank God for that. I thank God for the prayers of pastor and all of the saints who we hear at this church praying for me, and I could relate to David. I was glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because there's nothing like being out of the service of the Lord when you enjoy being in the service so much and not being able to go. You want to go, but you can't even get out of bed to go. Yeah. So I thank God I thank God for where I am now. And I, I just want to encourage you, those of you who are having illnesses, God is a healer, Amen. and that's what he assur assured me. Amen. He said, I am the God who heals you, and he has no respect to person. Yeah. You know. Amen. 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 Um, was there a, a verse or a passage that you held on to, I guess, during the time of, of, uh, of you know, the hospitalizations and, you know, all of, all of that stuff going on? Well, I, I would say that... Um, the thing that just stuck with me, like I said, is that I will send you help from the sanctuary because I was so concerned because my husband had to do everything. I was not able to cook. I was not able to clean myself. I was not able to bathe myself. I could barely comb my hair. Thank God that with me, the doctor said, with me working my hand because he said that usually the hand is the last thing to come into working order. But my hand never really stopped uh, working. 
And he said that was because I kept working my hand with the other hand. So I would say that um, I will send you help from the sanctuary is one thing that just helped me so much because I was always concerned about my husband having to do everything. Yes. Yeah. One of the things that stuck out to me about uh, Sister Laversi, she like sent me kind of her, her answers beforehand. And um, one of the things that she said was, I think a lot of people would have asked, like, why me? Like, why me? And um, she said the Lord kind of shifted her perspective to ask, why not me? Like, I want to be used by God. I want to be a general in his army. Why not me? You know, like, I, like with, with God, I'm able to handle this, you know, and anything else that comes my way. And so um, that was just super amazing to hear your perspective Praise on God. that. And, and so, um, but yeah, thank you so much for sharing this morning, Praise Sister Laversi. Can we give her a hand this morning? There's healing. Like she was saying, if, if you need it this morning, there's healing in this place. There's healing in God's presence. And so, um, and we have one more testimony this morning. Um, it is Dane Blakely. Could you guys give it up for Dane as he comes up this morning? <laughs> Dane is a, another one of our, our newer attenders here at Go. Um, he and, and Carissa and his, his whole family and um, again, it's, it's been a blessing to see you growing in the Lord as well, man. And even in the midst of kind of trials and, and struggles, you know, that, that we, you know, that you guys have kind of gone through, it's been so awesome to see you guys just continue to be faithful, continue to be here. And, and, and um, so this morning, would you tell us a little bit about your journey with the Lord um, and how you ended up, you know, kind of at go? So. Sure. Well, first of all, this is so natural. Like, I love being in front of all these people. Like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not this. Um, yeah, that's my actually my worst fear is being in front of people. But who am I to, to deny you know my miracles that have happened? When I uh, asked Dane, not to cut you off there, but I was like, would you would you share this morning? He was like, uh, I don't. He's like, I don't, I don't. That's not really my thing, but I'll do it. I'll do it. And so, um, yeah, Just thank you so much. Faithful, yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, and uh, first of all, I mean, all glory to God because this this stuff that I couldn't do myself at all. Um, and with my journey with God, it's, it's always been in the household. We had a good foundation um, from our childhood, even though we, like my sister said, we grew up we grew up in, in kind of harder times. But um, you know, he he was always there. We always had the good foundation. Um, and you know, just reading the Word more and more every day, I get to learn how much my story, you know, matches other stories in the Bible, and just seeing, you know. Um, uh, edification in myself um, so it's just it's awesome but um, you know as a teenager I, I definitely rebelled when it went astray um, and at, at the same time as a teenager I did ask the Lord to come into my life um, you know because I was always in church on Sunday um, on and off you know and um, even though I asked him into my life he he was there but I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing um, at the time um, so I, you know, I was into addictions and drugs and all kinds of stuff, you know, just like every other, well, not every other, but in, in my group that I was hanging out with, uh, that's, that's who it was, um, you know, and, and I always felt like I was different than everybody else, you know, I always knew it was uh, very temporary, um, but I, I did things to fit in, um, just to kind of be accepted, and, um, excuse me, <coughs> um, but I always knew he had his hand on me all along. You know, he was always there uh, protecting me throughout the, the dangerous situations I put myself in. Um, and then um, in, I started uh, kind of getting things on track and, and trying to get my job on track and, and my career and figured that thing out. Um, you know, and I met my wife and she had three boys and that kind of just jump started my whole life. I just was like, okay, I love this woman. I love these boys. How am I going to make things work, you know? Um, so I definitely pushed started or pushed myself to to be able to provide for the family and, and kind of be, you know, the man that I thought I, I should be um, at the time. And, you know, at that time I was still in and out of, of church and, um, you know, I'd, I'd go when 
invited or, you know, if I felt like it or if I was too tired on Sunday, you know, working too hard, I'd say, oh, no, I, you know, I'm just going to sleep in. And it got to the point where I went too long. You know, I could tell it was just the, the, the longer I stayed away, the more I felt kind of hardened and um, my heart was, was feeling hardened. And then, you know, my, I've always been a very emotional kid. <laughs> they'll, they'll attest to that. Um, but at this time, I feel like I turned all that off. You know, I had no emotion um, whatsoever. And at that time, um, you know, my wife was really longing to go to church. And she would tell me every Sunday morning, hey, you know, let's go to church. And I'm like, ah, I'm too tired. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Uh, and I would just be sleeping in. Um, and then it was probably at least a year or two years of that. And then one morning, I just woke up out of my sleep on Sunday morning, and I felt like I was being told to go to church. And it was amazing. And, and normally, she'd be asking me, hey, do you want to go to church this morning? And I'd just tell her no. That was the normal Sunday morning thing. But on this morning, I woke up and I told her, hey, do you want to go to church? And she goes, what? <laughs> she was so confused. Um, and I was like, yeah, I, I have a, a feeling I got to go to church today. I got to go to church. And so I'm like, okay, let's, let's go. And so I'm excited because I feel like there's going to be a message that's for me. Like I, I know for a fact in my heart that there's something for me to hear. So I'm on my way to church, and my mom calls me and says, hey, do you want to go to church this morning? <laughs> I was like, what? what? Like she, she doesn't ever do that. Um, so, you know, and, and if she did that, at that time, if she did that, it would be, oh, oh, well, you know, if you pick me up, maybe, but, um, you know, she was like, okay, I'll meet you there. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, she's like, I have the same feeling. We're, we're being called to, to church today. And so we went to church, we sit down, we look at each other and we're like, okay, you know, everybody be quiet. Like, I got to hear this. This is for me. Like, I, I know it's for me. <laughs> and, and she says, uh, or the, the pastor comes on and he says, um, yeah, we're not going to have a, a normal service today. We're actually not going to have a service at all. And I said, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, yeah, we're, um, we're doing baptizing only today. And I looked at my mom and I said, I guess we're getting baptized today. You know, that's, that's what he's wow. calling us for. <laughs> you know, that was our first, that was my first step into, um, I can tell, you know, he, here's the progress that he's made and here's where he made that step that you're getting baptized today. Um, and, and that was just the start, and that was, that was seven years ago, um, which is crazy to me, because even after that time, which I knew he was moving in my life, things didn't happen right away, you know? Things were still very, very slow on, and on my end, on what I was doing. Um, so, I, you know, I, oh, okay, God told me to do this, I'm getting baptized, you know, that's it. So then I moved on and, and did the same thing that I did, you know, before. I'd be in and out of church, and... Um, you know, work started getting harder. I started getting different promotions, and it was just more and more stress. I got to the point where um, alcohol became just an everyday thing. Uh, 2018 to, to now, in February, when I was invited to go church by my mom and my sister, um, I could probably count on one hand how many times I was sober between 2018 and now. Um, and it was just a Oh, I had a great day today at work. I'm going to go home and have a drink. I had a really bad day. I got to have a drink. It was, uh, oh, let's celebrate. It's the weekend. I got to have a drink. Oh, it's Sunday morning. Let's start with drinking. You know, it was just, that was the thing. Um, and I knew that that's not what I wanted, but it was, it was not for me. I couldn't, I tried to quit. I could not quit. Um, you know, I, I would, I'd say today I'm not drinking. And that was like after years of just doing it, you know, every day. Um, and just by, you know, by noon, I'd be looking at, okay, well, maybe if I just have one drink, like, by two, or, you know, it was just, it, it was a problem. It became a, a really big problem, in which I never thought I would have a problem. I was one of the people that said I would never have addictions. I, I can quit any time. Um, that wasn't the case. I, I tried it, and I could not quit. Um, and so, you know, I, I hope that speaks to somebody out there that, that could, you know, has the same issue. Um, because, you know, we think we can quit any time or that we're invincible, and, and we're not. <laughs> um, so at that time, um, in February, uh, another miracle happened. You know, I found Go Church. You guys invited me here, and I feel like as soon as I walked in, it was like everything that he's worked up in me, um, the foundation, the baptizing, and the slowly instilling. Um, you know, I was, I was one of the Christians that, had the Bible by my bed every single day, 
planning to read it and never did. <laughs> and it just sat there for, for years collecting dust. Uh, so I always knew it was there, but on, on the back burner. And then I was going to take care of it one day. And, and just walking in here, I felt the Holy Spirit right away. Um, it, was, it was a different experience than any church I've ever been to. And right off the bat, it was like, I'm done. That's it. And ever since then, uh, I have not been drunk. I have not. Uh, everything just kind of went away, all of it. And it's not for, I have no desire. You know, I have no desire to drink. Um, not only that, you know, there's other things that were included in that. Uh, just desire in general. Uh, lust desires. Um, food desires. I was at a point where I was just eating whatever I wanted to eat just because it made me feel good. So it was like all that I was trying to fill in that void was just gone. Gone. Yeah. And it, what's crazy is that you said February and I started thinking about it. We've only been coming here for, for a month and a half. And that, to me, I felt like that it's been like, like you guys are family already. So it feels like <laughs> I can't, I can't even believe it. I'm like, it's only been a month and a half. Like I'm a, I feel like a new person and I feel like I've lived a whole different life in just a month and a half than I have the last four years. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> We're super honored, honored to have you, man. I'm and glad to be here. What is, what do you feel like, I guess, at, at this particular point in your story, kind of within the past six weeks or, you know, however long you want to go back, what do you feel like the Lord's been showing you lately? Like, <clears throat> right now, I feel like it's, um, you know, being as part of the, the, the Go 101 and the Grow team uh, with great mentors, um, I just feel like it's about uh, becoming, he's, he's pushing me in the direction of evangelism, I can tell right away, uh, discipleship and, and trying to bring others. Like, here's what I've done for you, go bring your brothers and sisters, and we have, I mean, and it's putting, putting me way out of my comfort zone, like this is <laughs> way out of my comfort zone, and, and I was, you know, telling Sister Laversi earlier, I was saying, you know, it's much more comfortable just to continue about my daily life, you know, you have to put some work in, um, and you know, I could tell right away that he wants me to be more like Jesus every day. And every, every thought, everything that comes out of my tongue is like, now I, it's, it's, whole, it's conviction. It's, it's automatically telling me, like, am I, am I saying the words that I should be saying, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I think he's building me up quickly, um, even though it was a very slow process to get to where I am. It's a very rapid process of where we're at right now, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, and... Lastly, do you feel, or is there a theme verse that you have for your life right now? Yeah. Um, what, is, what does that verse mean to it's, you? It's kind of been the theme verse, like, growing up. My mom's always said, Philippians 4.13, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And, uh, you know, that's, it, it always resonates. And I feel like right now, more than ever, um, you know, being in our, in our grow team, uh, Sister Sherry brought up um, how that verse, she brought that, without me bringing that verse up, she brought it up and said, it's also about enduring things, you know, and I've never, I've always thought about it as more of a motivational, uh, you know, my mom's, oh, you can do it, you can, you know, in sports or whatever it might be, you can do all things through Christ's strength, and I'm thinking, oh, cool, like, you know, it gives me like that extra, extra, yeah. um, but in this case, it's, it's hitting in a whole different realm, which is um, about an enduring, um, and in the hard times, and, yeah. you know, that you can do all things through, through Christ, and I have the strength through Christ and, and whatever I'm doing. And, and right now I'm going through a whole process of, you know, uh, career evaluation. And w it, now that I'm where I'm at, am I glorifying God in what I do? Um, you know, and I was kind of falling on hard times with that. But at the same time, I'm, I'm in a service job. Like I'm, I'm, this is what he's called me to do, no matter what it is. You know, if he steers me in another direction, great. But as of right now, I'm going to have joy in what I do. Um, and, and strength because of Philippians 4.13, Christ who strengthens me. Oh, that's amazing. Man, Dane, thank you so much yeah, for sharing your story this morning. We're so proud of you. Can I have you guys stand to your feet this morning? My prayer this morning is that these stories that we heard, that the, the reasons why we testify would, would stir our faith, would, 
would challenge us to share our stories of, of God's goodness, of God's faithfulness in our lives, to the, the times that we've seen him move. And my prayer is that we would leave here and be used by the Holy Spirit to reach out to people, and minister to people. So this morning for, for these next few moments, I just want to ask, what is your story? What is your story? What has the Lord brought you out of? What has the Lord done in your life? Can I encourage you this morning to go out and share of God's transformation in your life? To go out and share what you've seen Him do in your life because there's people out beyond these four walls we need to hear about what God's done in your life we need to hear about the times that he's healed you we need to hear about those times that he's pulled you out of depression we need to hear about those times where you weren't making it financially and he came through what is your story what is the comfort zone like Dane was saying that God is calling you to move out of this morning Spirit just reveal maybe a person or people who he wants you to share with. Maybe somebody will come to mind from your work, grocery store that you frequent, family member. Lord, where are you calling us? place this morning and you just you have a need maybe you're in this place and you just you need prayer for for boldness to step out and be able to share that story that, that god's brought you through and would you come this morning we'd love to pray with you we'd love to pray for you we'd love to see god's hand with you